assassin. Will you stand alone before the fury of his armies? Where do you think you're going with my horse? <laughs> you watch yourself, Octavian. No need for concern, miss. Oh, he's gonna pay for that. Live free. Rule well. <laughs> the most fun uh, I had with The Rock was really between him and Michael Clark Duncan. Uh, there was a great camaraderie and also kind of a great sense of competition between them. It just so happens that as I was, as we were all being pitched the, the treatment and um, speaking to Kevin Misher, the producer on the film, Kevin had said, you know, we have this one part, his name is Balthazar, and, and we'd love to get Michael Clark Duncan. I had hoped for nothing less. I'm not too sure if he's available, not too sure if he's even willing to do it. And I remember saying, and for this, and okay, so they're gonna go on the road and they're gonna meet this guy who runs this, you know, this rebel hideaway and, you know, he's gonna be a tough guy and you're gonna fight and it's gonna be like Robin Hood and Little John. That's gonna be the relationship. And, you know, Michael Clark Duncan would be perfect for this. Like, this, that's the type of guy we want. And he said, Michael Clark Duncan. Michael Clark Duncan's one of my best friends. And I said, hey, well, I, before you even go on, I, I think it's a, it's a great idea. Not only that, we're the best of friends. I'll call him tonight and we'll see. He called me and I said, well, you explain to me what's going on. He said, this is what's happening. Talked about 10 minutes, I said, I don't care, let's do it. And before he even read anything, he's like, I'm in. Actually, he's like, I'm in. I said, I really want to work with you, because we had always talked about working together. And when you got two buddies working together, it makes the day go a lot quicker. Knowing that they were friends, and that the role called for someone who started out as a rival, in which they you know, try to beat each other down, and then end up as friends. One night sanctuary. And pray our paths never cross again. We really felt we could draw on their real life friendship to enrich what happened on screen and it, it worked great. Even when they're going at each other in the movie, I assure you when the camera stopped, they were laughing about it. There's a fight scene between them that was something that they prepared for for weeks just by sort of taunting each other. And Rock would leave pictures of himself in Michael's trailer with, you know, two days left, one day left, get ready. <laughs> it's fun to see these two guys at each other uh, in character and in real life. They really played each other throughout this entire picture. Bring the woman to me. Hey, Rock, you got that much power, baby? I guess I do. When we finally got to, to shoot the fight, uh, the Rock knows from his experience, and I know from my experience, choreographing fights, the most important thing for safety. I mean, we do have to block it out like a dance and then go back and really make it wild. But Michael's not quite so used to all the choreography. Um, so there was a sequence, if you, when you watch the film, uh, as towards the very end of their fight, uh, Rock, the, the battle turns to Rock's favor. And there's a series, a flurry of punches and elbows. And Michael Clark Duncan leaned forward when he was supposed to lean backwards. So I have a wonderful uh, shot of him taking uh, Rock's elbow solidly in, in the jaw. Chuck Russell, the director, had yelled action. And I was just so amped up and so geeked up and ready to go. And we had this vibe going, this energy. And I caught Michael with the tip of my elbow and uh, it knocked him out. And the whole set went quiet. He did not knock me out. He knocked me down to one knee. One knee, not out. I knocked him out for about five seconds. One knee, right there. I got up, I shook it off, I continued to film. Please let him know it was not out. I just hit this guy, he got knocked out. Tell him to stop telling people out. Knocked down, I give him that. And there's 300 people, so he's probably somewhat embarrassed. And and he's making his way up, and I go over to him, I said, Mike, you okay? And he goes, don't touch me. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna have to go. We're gonna have to go. This is what it comes down to. I, when he gets up, 
I got a feeling he's going to swing. But it wasn't even a good hit. It wasn't even a good lick, man. Come on. <laughs> he was a trooper. He was great. And I thought, man, thank God our friendship uh, uh, overweighed <laughs> the elbow because he would have he hurt me. Actually, he wouldn't have hurt me. I mean, if he would have swung, I would have whooped his ass right there on the set. No questions asked, but, you know, he didn't swing. It was like a boxing match. He was like, Chuck, I'm okay, I can shoot, man, I can shoot. I'm like, okay, Michael, what day of the week is it, you know? We had the smelling salts and everything. Now, what Michael then did to get back at The Rock was the makeup guys took him to the makeup trailer and put a huge wad of cotton in Michael's mouth so it looked like his entire face was swollen. And they set the rock up. They had cameras, a still camera, ready to get his reaction. And Michael came out saying, Rock, I can't shoot the movie anymore, man. You, you, you messed my face up. And uh, we have a shot of Rock where he looks like a broken-hearted puppy. He, he felt so badly, he thought he'd really hurt Michael and probably ruined the scene. Uh, and, of course, it was a big diss, and everybody had a good laugh at The Rock's uh, expense. There was a lot of humor on this set. It helped uh, make the hard work go uh, much better. One night sanctuary. And pray you never hit me like that again. <laughs> Come on.